<laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for that awesome introduction. Uh, so just a quick show of hands here. How many parents here? Uh, a, lot, a lot of parents. You guys are taking up a lot of oxygen in this place. Uh, how about uh, students? All right. And how many people are here just to see Guy Kawasaki speak after lunch? <laughs> so there you go, some modest people. Well, listen, I, I, can't, I can't tell you how lucky you guys are to be here. Um, I was in your shoes like 10 years ago, and I would have killed to be at a conference like this. So uh, let's give a round of applause to Neil, Neeraj, the whole like, team out here. These guys have done an awesome job. All right, um, so this is really for the students. I'm glad to see there's so many of you guys out here. Uh, I want to start by asking you guys, how many of you guys have jobs today? You guys have jobs? A few of you guys? How about um, in the summer? Any summer job folks here? OK. Uh, how many of you guys, uh, by show of hands, liked the jobs that you guys have? OK, about half of you guys. How many of you guys have worked in retail, at a mall, fast food, anything where you have to serve your idiot friends? <laughs> what? <laughs> and you hate it, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, I learned, I've learned a lot, um, thankfully, made a lot of mistakes. I think the most formative thing for me was when I got my first job at McDonald's. Um, <laughs> this was my boss, my first boss. And this was my job. Uh, I don't know if you can see this very clearly. I could when I was working there. <laughs> this, is a, this is the back storage area of McDonald's. I, you know, all the cool kids got to work at the front. You know, they, they, they were cashiers. Uh, they put me right in the back. And I don't know why they did that. I, I, I don't know if I wasn't good looking enough or because I gave free fries to all of my friends who would come. But I used to work in the back. Now, in the back, what they made me do was organize all of the little cartons uh, for fries. Uh, now, I was. Uh, I was, a, um, I was pretty good at academics. Uh, I was in this IB program at the time. And what I used to do after school to make some money was organize these fry containers. And I might be the only entrepreneur who's ever been fired from McDonald's. <laughs> so about six weeks into it, my manager comes and sits me down. I, it was basically Ronald McDonald himself, sat me down and, <laughs> and said that he had to speak to me for a few minutes. And so I said, you know, excellent, because anything I could do to get out of that damn storage area, uh, I would do. And he came and he told me that they had to let me go because I was working too slow. Uh, I think there probably could be better reasons for getting fired from McDonald's, but uh, for me, it was sheerly laziness. Um, that was very difficult for me. Uh, at, at, you know, at the age of 16, getting fired from McDonald's, and if you want to go and try to get another job in the city, and you've been fired from McDonald's, <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of hard to get you know, a reference uh, when McDonald's has fired you. No other place in the city would hire me. And this was a big problem for me at 16, because I really wanted to work I was really into school, I was really into academics, but I wanted to get some you know, experience on the side, I wanted to make some money on the side, and so having a job was really important to me. But I had to figure out what to do after this tragic event happened to me at 16. And what I vowed to myself was that I was going to take my life into my own hands. So at 16 years old, I was going to take life into my own hands, and I was going to do something so that I would never, ever, ever, ever have to work at a fast food restaurant again. And so I began, uh, I began scheming with my, with my brother over here. Now, this is actually one of my buddies, one of my best friends, Hussein. Uh, this is from last week in Vegas. It was the best photo I could find of us together. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, we've known each other since we were five years old. 
And so he and I went to the same school together. He saw me go to McDonald's, get fired from McDonald's. He worked at a hardware store, a um, little less lazy than I, so he never got fired. And the two of us basically decided that we were going to start a company together. And so we started to scheme. <laughs> now, we were always into computers from a young age. From a really young age, we were into computers. So we decided that we were going to do something with computers, and we were going to create, finally, we came up with this idea of helping businesses set up websites and email addresses. And we would do so um, through this website, and it would be for free. And he would do all of the coding, I would do the website design, all the business stuff, and we were going to be rich, right? That was the big idea. Now, we, when we came up with the idea, one big, big problem um, ar uh, ar arose within the first week of this idea. And that was, we decided that we couldn't tell our parents that we were going to start a company. Now, for those of you who, uh, in fact, I'm sure most of you are in this position, um, you know, if you have, you know, you have parents who are always writing you all the time, always trying to check your grades, always trying to push you, push you, push you. I, some of you may not even be here on your own free will this, uh, this morning. Uh, it's okay. Uh, those are my parents. And so, if I told my parents that I was going to sort of sacrifice this IB program, International Baccalaureate program I was in, and this whole fast track to get into college, for starting a business on the side because I got fired from McDonald's, uh, there would have been two options for me. The belt or the slipper. <laughs> Those would be my only two options. And uh, so what Hussein and I decided was that we were going to hide this from our parents. So that meant that anytime we talked about the business in, at home, on the phone, on our cell phones, we had to call it by a secret name. <laughs> so we came up with the name Operation Thundercat. Okay, so it was Operation Thundercat after the Transformers, yes. And so I would be on the phone, and if I asked him, you know, how the servers for Operation Thundercat were doing, and he said, you know, they were stable, uh, my mom had absolutely no idea what I was talking about, and it was great. Um, but that wasn't the only challenge. You know, as you guys sit here and you think about what it would take to really start a business today or next year or over the summer or whatever it might be, there are a ton of different things that you probably think about as challenges or obstacles. I mean, my biggest one was telling my parents, you guys do not have that problem because likely your parents drove you here, which is a really positive sign, right? Uh, for me, telling my parents was the biggest thing, so hiding it from them it had to be done. The second thing that hit us was that if we were going to start this company, we needed to open up a bank account. And if we were going to open up a bank account, we would need to have the company registered. I mean, we needed to have, we felt we needed to have the company name, comma, Inc. That was the only way that you could have a real legit company. <laughs> so Hussein and I went down to the business registration office in downtown. And we went down there, and we stood in line, and we filled out the form. And we went up to the counter when our number was called, and we were super, super, super excited because this was going to be the formation of our actual, legit company. So we get to the front of the line, the lady looks at the form, and she asks us, how old are we? And I said, very proudly, uh, yeah, you know, we're both 17 years old. And she looks at us and goes, well, you need to be at least 18 to register a business. And so, we stood in this line for 45 minutes. We filled out this whole form. We took a bus all the way to downtown. You had to take three transfers to get down there. We had to skip class. We did all these things to get down there. And then we hid it from our parents. We had this Operation Thundercat. We had the whole idea. And then we get to register the business, and the lady tells us that we're too young to start the business. So even before we've tried to, you've taken our first step, our dreams are crushed. But I'll tell you, I really, really did not want to go back to McDonald's. <laughs> so Hussein and I started to scheme, and we started to think, what could we do to possibly get over this? Now, I, I sort of tried to shave a little bit before I got here. Um, Hussein, uh, and I'll, let's see, he's pretty clean shaven uh, in this photo, but um, you know, Hussein, as you can imagine from the name, <laughs> 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 
Hussein had a full beard at six and a half years old, okay? <laughs> Hussein had no problem, no problem um, growing facial hair uh, whatsoever. <laughs> you should ask his girlfriend about his shoulders today, but that's another story. So I told Hussein, now we were really big into ice hockey, um, and the playoffs were coming, so I said, why don't you keep your, just don't shave for like three hours, right? <laughs> and <laughs> we can go back downtown and register the company. So sure enough, we, he doesn't shave for about two weeks. Took a little longer than I was hoping. Uh, but it was pretty much like a Chia Pet after about 10 days, right? And the problem was, of course, his mom was asking him what the heck was going on. <laughs> uh, and he just kept on saying, it's a playoff beard. I'm rooting for my team. I don't want to shave this thing. So he has this, you know, kind of spotty peach fuzz thing going on. And, and we went down uh, to downtown. And basically, he made me stand outside because he said there was no way, there was no way he was going to let me go in, you know, looking like a 12-year-old trying to get this business ready. I'd ruined the entire crush's dreams again, right? So I let him go in by himself, and I'm st standing outside of this business registration office just waiting. I'm on my phone. I'm playing, like, games on my phone. Finally, like 35 minutes later, he comes out, the biggest smile on his face, grinning ear to ear. He has this form in his hand. It's been stamped with red ink, and he's like, yeah! <laughs> And then he's like, I got to shave this thing right now. <laughs> so we go back home, and now we've got the business registered. It's, um, it's, it's phenomenal. We've, we've actually got this business off, off now. And we decided that we needed to get people to come to our website. Now, we didn't have a lot of money because I only was employed at uh, McDonald's for several weeks. But we took the money that we did have, and we, and we decided to take out a newspaper ad because that was, you know, the thing that you would do back then, right? And so I put out a newspaper ad, and I built the ad myself in Photoshop. It was absolutely ridiculous, because when it got printed, it was all, like, it was too small. It had to be, like, enlarged. It was ridiculous. It cost $1,300. Do you know how many people came to our website? Do you know how many customers that we got for this $1,300 full-color ad? No, don't answer the question. I'll tell you. <laughs> we got four people who signed up. Four people signed up. And so we put all this money into this ad, and then we had four people who actually signed up to start a website on our, on our system. So um, we had no idea what to do. So we started to do all this guerrilla marketing online. And I think one of the cool things that we can do today, you know, is starting online businesses, is that you can start to get uh, people coming to your site. And you, can, you can build up um, a community really, really quickly. So that's what we did. And, um, you know, we started to put, you know, um, anytime we would send an email out to any of our friends, we would put links to this website. Uh, we started um, going online into, uh, in, uh, onto other discussion forums and starting to, we started to tell people that, um, you know, we had uh, free photos of different celebrities and things like that. Uh, we did whatever we had to do to get people to come to our site. And pretty soon, um, by the way, don't tell anybody that. That's just between us. Uh, and then pretty soon, uh, we started to get 1,000 people signing up to, to the site, 2,000 people signing up to the site, 3,000. And these were all businesses who were starting their companies using our, um, using our website. And then we hit 10,000 people. Now, if you remember, no one knew that we were running this company. Okay? Now, what happens when you have 10,000 customers? You, ha you, know, you have to deal with customer service, right? So how would two kids deal with customer service? Here's what we did. If you remember, uh, we, were these, we, were, we, were, we were sort of scheming, right? We had to think about what was the right idea. So here's what we came up with. I had a cell phone and a pager. Now, back then, we used to have pagers, OK? So I had a cell phone and a pager. And what would happen was um, I had a girl. I was dating this girl at the time. And she recorded a message on my pager that said, thank you for calling, but all of our operators are currently busy. Okay. <clears throat> now, we had to do this, because if any of our customers knew there were these two 17-year-old Indian guys 
with like one with a full beard, right? <laughs> one who just got fired from McDonald's. <laughs> Running this website, we would have had no customers, okay? So she had to record this message saying, all the operators are busy, please leave a message. And someone will return your call as soon as possible. Now what would happen was, I would be in English class, and the pager would go off because a customer would call. Now if a customer called, they'd leave a message on the pager, and we said that we would return your call in four hours because we really believed that great customer service was important, even at that young age, right? And um, so as soon as the pager would go off, I would put my hand up. Now, I don't know if, you know, this is probably something very familiar to you guys. Put your hand up, and it doesn't matter what the hell you have to do. It was always, um, teacher, I, I, um, I have to go to the bathroom, is that okay? <laughs> yes, Raheem, no problem, go. I would go, I would go outside, I would check the page, um, check the message, I'd call the customer back and I would say, uh, uh, hello, this is Raheem, thank you for calling, um, you know, Mail BC, I got your customer support message, uh, you know, how can I help you? And then I'd solve the problem, whatever it was, and then I'd go back into class. Now, a couple problems. The first one is, if he has to go to the bathroom once in a class, that is okay. <laughs> if you start to ask to get out of class twice in the same class, your teachers start to think you have a urinary infection. <laughs> so be very careful about that. The second thing was that I didn't want to say my name was Rahim every single time I answered the phone. Uh, so I used to come up with different names. Uh, some, so, you know, some were ethnic names, you know, some were, you know, I would say sometimes my name is Cletus, uh, how can I help you? Most call centers are actually located in the Midwest, so that was okay. Um, but then I remember there was this one day I was calling a customer back and I had run out of male names to say. <laughs> so the lady answers the phone and I freak out and I go, um, thank you for calling, this is Hilda speaking. <laughs> 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 and I had to run through the entire call sounding like a 48-year-old woman. <laughs> but like I said, you, you got to do what you got to do, right? You can't let anything get in the way of your dreams. Now, we start to get towards the end of the school year. The college, I've, all my college applications have been submitted. I've gotten my acceptances to places. I was really stoked. I, uh, couldn't be happier. But the business has grown. It's now 25,000 customers. We get, um, I get home one day, and my mom and dad are sitting in the living room, and they're looking at each other. Now, that was odd for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my mom and dad love each other, but they don't spend too much time on the same couch looking at one. <laughs> Okay, so but I did the usual thing that I do when I get home. I got home, I took my shoes off, and I started to run upstairs. Went to my room, got on my computer. And I'm halfway up the stairs, and my dad goes, Rahim! <laughs> like, oh, damn. <laughs> All right, so I come downstairs, I get into the living room. I say, uh, <laughs> what's going on? And they said, Rahim. <laughs> That's how my dad talks. Rahim, we know. <laughs> what? what, what? <laughs> so I'm not saying anything. What? And I'm thinking in my head, what is he talking about? This man is crazy. <laughs> and I said, what, 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 what are you talking about, Dad? And he goes, your principal called today. <laughs> I'm thinking, why would my principal be calling my house? Now, I had, I had skipped out about eight classes that week. But that was for good reason. Our servers had gone down. I had to go downtown. I had to go fix the servers. OK. OK. <laughs> but I'm wondering, what the heck is going on? So he says, Rahim, your principal called. Now I'm going to get out of the accent, because it's too hard to. So he said, listen, your principal called. He said, uh, he said you are missing a lot of class. So I, I knew that I was, missing a, I was missing a little bit of class, <coughs> relatively. <laughs> and then he said, 
and your teacher said that uh, you miss a lot of class, you go out of the class sometimes once, sometimes twice. <laughs> Same class, once, sometimes twice. Oh my God, where is this going? And then she also said that another teacher said that you are walking around with a cell phone and a pager inside your class and you are going out of the class once, sometimes twice. <laughs> so I said, what is going on here? And I'm thinking I am screwed <laughs> because they just found out about Operation Thundercat <laughs> and I may need to go back to McDonald's this summer. <laughs> So he said, Rahim, we know. We know, Rahim. Rahim, you are dealing the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that was the best, that was the best point of my entire life. Okay? <laughs> to have your parents to have your parents tell you convincingly that you are dealing drugs <laughs> when you are actually running an online business with 25,000 customers <laughs> is an absolutely amazing feeling. <laughs> but I had a choice to make because if I admitted I was running the company, you know those two options, right? <laughs> Bell to the slipper. But if I told them I was dealing drugs, then <laughs> probably belt or the slipper. <laughs> so when he said, why are you missing class once, sometimes twice? I said, I don't know, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I have a urinary infection or something. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, okay, we better take you to the doctor. So I went to the doctor, I got some lab tests done. Just so you guys know, I was okay. I was completely okay. The business lasted for another day. Now, we get a, we get a, um, a company emails us and says, uh, we like your website, we think you have a lot of traffic, we wanna buy your company. Now, I remember where I was, I was in Chemistry 12, and I, I went to the bathroom, uh, as I did, <laughs> as you know, it was my sort of office at the school. <laughs> <laughs> where I conducted most of my business. And I, um, I checked the email and this company was serious. They, they wanted to buy the company. Now, so I, I called them up, we had a conversation. They said that we, we, it took about, probably about a month or so, and then they, they sent us a, a contract. They sent us a, an agreement to buy the company. Now, if you remember, um, I could barely read the, you know, like that, uh, the timesheet at McDonald's uh, a couple of years back, let alone this agreement to buy the company. So what do you do? Now, I did the only thing that I knew, and that was I, I went to Hussein and I said, let's, let's um, it's time to get that beard on, first of all. <laughs> second, I just like the beard. And the second thing was, let's open up the yellow pages and let, let's look under attorneys and let's call a lawyer. So we looked under uh, A, and it was Abrams, Abrams and Abrams. And we called up Abrams and Abrams and we said, Hey, listen, we're these two kids. Um, we just got an offer to buy the company, but we don't know how to read this document. Can you please help us figure this stuff out? And they said, absolutely, we can do that. Like, yes. And then they said, by the way, it's $595 an hour. Now, I was making $6 an hour at McDonald's, so that seemed like 100 times what I was getting paid at McDonald's to pay this lawyer for one hour. And I figured it would take more than an hour. So... I said, oh, you know what, sir, that's just far too expensive for me. I, I just can't pay that. And he said, well, we really believe in our service here at Abrams & Abrams. Why don't you come for a one-hour free consultation? So I said, a free <laughs> consultation? That sounds amazing. So I went down, um, may or may not have involved skipping class, and we went to go to the lawyer. <laughs> and we took the contract down there. They looked at the, at the contract, they made their red lines to it, and that night they sent it back to me. So I was so happy because we didn't have to, we didn't have to spend anything uh, to get this contract done. So I sent it back to the company that wanted to buy us, and three days later they send us more changes back. 
So now I'm like, oh man, now I've got to pay this guy $595 an hour to get this thing done. So what do you do? So over the yellow pages, <laughs> I called up the second one. <laughs> okay, it was Abercrombie and something. So I called this other guy up, I said, listen, I have never worked with you before. I don't even know you. But I have this contract, someone wants to buy the company. Do you have something like a one hour free consultation? <laughs> and they said, yes, absolutely. Come down for your one hour free consultation. I said, awesome. Go downtown, meet with the lawyers. We give them the contract. They make some more changes. They send it back to me. I send it to the company. The company sends it back to me. More changes. What do you do? We went through nine different lawyers <laughs> for nine free one hour consultations. Okay? <laughs> and we ended up selling the company for a million and a half dollars. Didn't spend a single dime on a lawyer. All right. Uh, and, then, and then I should say that, um, just so you guys know, and this is not a joke, this is, I mean, this is not a funny part, um, after we sold the company, my parents freaked out because they had no idea like, what they were going to tell our family and their uncles and aunts and would they be able to use coupons anymore and all these <laughs> problems, right? <clears throat> and they actually pushed me to go back to school. And I'll speed the story up real quick because I want to get, get to the, the, the takeaways here. But uh, what ended up happening was I said, I don't see any value in school whatsoever, so I'm not going to go. So I didn't go to school. I ended up starting another business. I ran it for two years. I thought I was on the top of the world. That business ended up like falling flat on its, on its face. And I lost almost all of this money that I made running this business. And I had no idea what to do with myself two years later. And so what, what do I end up doing? I end up going to my parents and saying, help me out because I have no idea what to do with myself. And I end up going back to school and, uh, and doing graduate school and, and getting an MBA. And I'll tell you, and this is all in all seriousness, that was one of the best decisions that I made uh, for having the company that I have today, which has been even, way, even like 100 times more successful than this company in high school. So, um, so it, 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 a little bit of what your parents has to say actually does make sense, OK? <laughs> now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you five things that I learned from this experience, because I hope that they're helpful for you, OK? The first one is, get down with dad, OK? Get down with dad, mom, other suits. Now, as you could tell, I didn't tell my parents anything for this entire journey. That was probably, um, I wish if I had done it again, I would have involved my parents more. And so one of the things that I really encourage you guys to do is that, you know, given that you're here today, obviously you have lots of family support. Your family can be massively supportive. And it's something that I didn't actually take advantage of in high school. I do today. And uh, having a good relationship with my parents, because I did not have a great relationship with my parents in high school because of all of the things that I was doing, uh, and, and all the things that I could, uh, cannot tell you guys that I was doing, that I was doing. Um, and I wish that I had, uh, I wish things were better. Because my sister was like the perfect daughter, and she's a perfect student. She has like four degrees. She has been, she's incredibly successful. She had an awesome relationship with my parents. And that was, I think, one of the, one of the things that I regret that I didn't have. I was such a rebel when I was that age. The second thing is get a crew. Now, what do I mean, what do I mean by this? Two things. Number one, how many friends, uh, you know, if you're walking down the hall, you guys may not have this issue, but uh, maybe you do. Walking down the halls, you see a friend of yours, and they're like, hey, let's go to McDonald's. I say McDonald's just because it's close to my heart. But it doesn't have to be McDonald's. <laughs> it could be, let's go to the mall. Let's go somewhere, you know, let's go somewhere else. Or like over the weekend, um, you know, always trying to make you skip out of whatever activities you might, you might um, actually have. Um, I had a lot of friends like that. And so um, what I had to end up doing was I became better friends with Hussein because he and I were like so similar. We were always on the same wavelength. And you know, we, went, we did all the things that all of our friends did. We went to all the parties. We had such a good time. But, um, we were like really focused on not ever having the opportunity to get fired at McDonald's ever again. So it brought us really close together and he ended up being a really good rock for me. I surrounded myself with, with people who were really, really good. 
Um, the second thing is that I kind of formed this advisory board around me. So today at Involver, which is the company I run today, we have this awesome board of directors. You guys are probably familiar with the board of directors, the people that you go to if you're running a company, they kind of help you run the company in a way, in a really simple way, right? So I had these advisors that I would go to every time I had a question uh, about my about my website and that's something I really suggest you guys do as well build you know a circle around you build a crew around you of people whether they're lawyers or accountants like I would not have had to do this whole free one hour consultation stuff with the lawyers if I had a lawyer who I knew that was part of my crew right so lawyers and accountants two greatest people you can have in your crew the third thing is get a life so all this stuff that we're talking about running the company being in IB all the hard things that you guys do on a day-to-day -day basis if you're not having a good time, if you're not out there doing the things that regular kids do, then you're going to completely regret it. So make sure that um, you know, among all the activities, all the college prep, all that other stuff that you do, if you guys want to start a business, whatever it might be, make sure you're actually doing stuff that is fun and matters, right? Um, the fourth thing is get smart with money. So a lot of people want to run businesses, but they can't even manage their own personal finances. That is a major, major, major problem, right? So whether you're working today or you know, you have whatever, allowance, whatever, your parents give you money, whatever it might be. Um, make sure that you actually are smart about money. And uh, there's a, re one of my best friends uh, runs a blog called I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Go to that blog. It's one of the greatest, um, I, like, I don't actually tell him I read it because I don't want his ego to get bigger, but I do read it. I will teach you to be rich. Awesome. Really get smart with money. It's one of the best things you can do. And if you talk to your parents, talk to other people that you know, they'll tell you that one of the biggest reasons why companies fail is because they run out of cash. Right? That's one of the biggest reasons you as an individual will fail if you run out of cash. Uh, there's one of the greatest lines I, I love um, quoting all the time, which is that cash flow is more important than your mother. <laughs> Take that to the bank. All right? <laughs> and the fifth one is get going. Okay, so when you guys leave today, you're going to be super inspired, right? You guys are going to have all of these ideas. You want to, you're going to want to get started. And then what's going to happen? Then one of you guys is going to say, oh, but you know what? Like tomorrow is Sunday, right? So, oh, you know what would be so cool? Like FIFA 12 just came out for Xbox 360. Let's go play that. That's like, I cannot tell you how many friends I had growing up who were like that. And those are the same people today, 10 years later, who are still complaining about stuff. You know, I don't know if you have friends who have these really big ideas all the time, um, but then they always seem to be complaining because things just don't go right. That's a pattern. That's going to continue happening with those people. Don't be one of those people. Make sure that you actually, if, if you have an idea, you want to do something, get started. Don't let anything get in your way. Even if you're in school, you have all these things to do, don't let that get in your way, right? If you need to grow a beard to get your business registered, <laughs> grow a freaking beard, man. <laughs> All right, thank you guys, and we'll take some Q&A, I think.